What makes tardigrades so resistant to ionizing radiation? Researchers learned their secret. Tardigrades are microscopic creatures famous for their ability to survive truly extreme conditions that most forms of life would be unable to cope with. Scientists in recent studies have looked at their extraordinary resistance to ionizing radiation. It turns out that these animals have a trick up their sleeve that allows them to do this. Tardigrades are creatures up to about a millimeter in length. They live almost everywhere, but prefer to inhabit aquatic or humid environments. For this reason, they are also called water bears. But they are best known for their ability to survive in almost any conditions. They manage to survive in extremely low temperatures, but also in scorching heat reaching up to 150 degrees Celsius. They can withstand pressure of over 6,000 atmospheres and can go without water for decades. They have already been sent to the moon. It was even checked whether they would survive quantum entanglement. Tardigrades are also known to withstand extreme amounts of ionizing radiation. It was discovered 60 years ago that they can survive radiation approximately 1,000 times more intense than the lethal dose for humans. But how do they manage to do it? It turns out that tardigrades are not actually resistant to ionizing radiation. Such radiation damages their DNA, like that of other organisms. But tardigrades have the tools to quickly repair extensive damage. The results and description of the research were published in the journal, Current Biology. Scientists from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill are behind the new research. Their work reveals new details about how tardigrades respond to ionizing radiation, which damages DNA and overexposure can lead to a variety of diseases. But tardigrades have an unexpected way of repairing the damage. Scientists previously suspected that the resistance to ionizing radiation, at least in some tardigrade species, was due to the presence of a damage-suppressing protein called DSUP, damage suppressor, which is unique to these creatures. But not all tardigrade species have DSUP. This suggested that there was some other mechanism. To determine this, researchers exposed the tardigrade species Hypsobius exemplaris to gamma rays emitted from the beta decay of CESIUM-137. In the experiments, tardigrades were exposed to various doses of radiation, from low doses, with intolerable limits, to those exceeding the lethal dose. Although the species Hypsobius exemplaris has DSUP, the tardigrade DNA has been severely damaged by radiation. Instead, scientists found that these creatures, unlike humans, can increase the production of DNA repair genes to such extreme levels that their products become some of the most abundant in their tiny bodies. Within 24 hours after exposure to radiation, the tardigrades repaired most of the damaged DNA. In further research, the researchers implemented some DNA repair genes taken from tardigrades into Escherichia coli bacteria and exposed samples with the bacteria to ionizing radiation. It turned out that the genetically altered bacteria had a DNA repair ability similar to that observed in Hypsobius exemplaris. Bacteria from the control group that did not have their genes tampered with died. 
This suggests that tardigrades are able to sense ionizing radiation and trigger a response that allows them to survive doses that would wipe out other animals. What we saw surprised us. Tardigrades are doing something we didn't expect, said Bob Goldstein, one of the authors of the paper. These animals have an incredible response to radiation. And that seems to be the secret to their extreme survival abilities, said Courtney Clark Hatchtell, co-author of the study. What we learn about how tardigrades respond to radiation could lead to new ideas about how we might protect other animals and microorganisms, she added. Similar results were obtained in independent experiments by researchers from the Natural History Museum in Paris, who also discovered the previously unknown ability of tardigrades to repair their DNA. The results of their research were published in the journal, Eli. Scientists have adapted stomach cells to produce insulin. Stem cells obtained from human stomach tissue can be reprogrammed into cells resembling insulin-secreting pancreatic cells, known as beta cells. Scientists have shown in experiments that transplanting small groups of such cells reversed the symptoms of diabetes in mice. Insulin is a hormone that regulates blood glucose levels. Without it, blood glucose levels become too high, which leads to diabetes and its numerous complications. High glucose levels are caused by a defect in the functioning of the pancreatic beta cells, which produce insulin. In type 1 diabetes, beta cells are destroyed by the immune system. As a result, the ability to produce insulin disappears. In type 2 diabetes, tissue sensitivity to insulin is reduced. As a result, the body demands increased insulin production, which exceeds the capabilities of beta cells. As a result, Beta cells do not function properly and the level of insulin in the body decreases, although it is still produced. Type 2 diabetes is the most common form of diabetes. In a study published in Nature Cell Biology, scientists from Vile Cornell Medicine in the US showed that human stomach stem cells can be directly transformed with striking efficiency, into cells similar to pancreatic beta cells. Scientists managed to take stomach stem cells and modify them to produce insulin in response to increased sugar levels. In typical circumstances, insulin secretion is carried out by the beta cells of the pancreas. However, in people suffering from diabetes, they are either damaged or die out altogether, which obviously affects the condition of the body. Interestingly, at the embryonic stage, cells of both the pancreas and stomach are adjacent to each other. So certain possibilities could be expected here. Moreover, the stomach has its own cells that are able to secrete hormones. Hence the idea to study stomach cells to find a potential therapy for diabetes. Additionally, by collecting such cells from a person suffering from diabetes, it was possible to eliminate the risk of rejection of structures based on them. While this all looks very promising, for years scientists have not been able to reprogram stomach stem cells to secrete insulin in response to rising sugar levels. This was achieved by activating three proteins responsible for gene expression.
In further studies, the cells began to show sensitivity to glucose, which confirmed that the researchers were on the right track. Does this solution work? The researchers decided to check this by implanting the modified cells into rodents suffering from a mouse model of diabetes. First of all, they functioned exceptionally stably throughout the entire period of observation. And most importantly, they were able to not only stop the progression, but also reverse the effects of diabetes. There is no need to convince anyone that this can be a huge opportunity for diabetics. However, several challenges will still need to be faced. First of all, scientists emphasize the fact that there are some important differences between human and mouse stomach tissues that will need to be taken into account. In addition, it will be necessary to ensure that the new insulin-secreting tissues themselves become more resistant to attacks by the immune system. This is a proof-of-concept study and gives us a solid foundation for developing therapies for type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes based on patients' own cells, said study co-author Dr. Jojo of Vile Cornell Medicine.